Our people are the centerpiece of the Pacific Guardian Brigade. Our social media platforms are a way to enhance communication throughout our geographically dispersed brigade, spanning across three locations on mainland Japan, to the island of Okinawa, and even further south to Guam. As soldiers, we must maintain readiness even through the pandemic. We live in an entirely different environment today than we did a year ago. Even so, Pacific Guardians have remained flexible, resilient, and able to adapt to our challenging conditions. From hosting a virtual ball, socially distanced and sanitized competitions and exercises, regularly scheduled sharp EO and resilience messages, digital fitness videos, and medical Q&As, Pacific Guardians have met the challenges before them with the wellness of our brigade in mind. What started off with a goal of enhancing the brigade's readiness and communicating with our soldiers turned out to be shared across the Department of Defense and other branches. It showed us how necessary our work was for the total force. Hear it for yourself from the creators of the shows. Chaplain's Neighborhood, Sharp Points, the EO podcast, The Influence, Pacific Guardian Fitness, and Ask the Doc. Uh, chaplain Major Mark Johnston, and I am the Brigade Chaplain for the 38th ADA um, Brigade. Command Sergeant Major uh, Sartain said, uh, hey Chaplain, why don't you do a little talk about um, uh, resiliency, some of the things that help you stay resilient. I'd already had the idea of moral leadership lessons. Uh, I'd done them in the past where I would go to a place where a certain event had occurred and there were certain lessons in history that we could learn from those. And so I thought that I could, maybe I could do the same thing with resiliency, um, to tie a place in Japan to an idea that would help make us more resilient. And also it was just to show soldiers there are still places you can go, even under restriction. There. That process has um, kind of evolved as we've been doing them. But it's things that I have on my mind about areas in my life where I'm not resilient. And so I figure if I'm struggling with it, other people are probably struggling with it too. Well, yes, I've I've had many people um, come up to me that I don't know who they are and say, um, oh, I watched your video. Um, I've reconnected with people actually in Europe, um, in the United States, um, in there are people from all over the world who have viewed it. It's been on the DOD website many times. The Air Force has picked it up, the National Guard, the Marine Corps, um, the Navy, other groups have picked it up. And so I think that it has hit um, it has scratched an itch, and I think it has um, helped some people, and I know it has helped some people who have said to me, oh, please don't stop doing those. They're so helpful to me, and I really appreciate them. Look at the side of things that you already have and be grateful for them, and it will change your point of view. Yo, ichinichiyo. Have a nice day. I am Sergeant First Class Matthew Spurlock, Director of 38th ADA Brigade Sharp Industries, the forefront and innovator of Sharp Points. The intent behind it is basically the outside the box um, way to advertise, um, bring awareness, and educate prevention and training for the SHARP program. And outside the box, meaning, you know, not just someone in uniform talking about Army SHARP, but I like Marvel and bringing an entertainment value to it to make it more of a memorable message. Pretty much dress up like Tony Stark and uh, Iron Man and start SHARP points. And at the same time, utilize the soldiers for our unit and the skits, you know, act out certain scenarios in the videos. We've been shared by the Pentagon, uh, the DOD, the Marine Corps, the National Guard, uh, along with all of our uh, units and also the Army Sharp Academy. Join us next time on Sharp Point. I am your Brigade Sark. Welcome to the Influence Podcast, the show dedicated to discussions about important topics related to equal opportunity. So grab some coffee, kick back, and relax with me, your host, Sergeant First Class Chico. 
So the idea for the podcast actually came about because when I arrived here, I was at the height of the COVID restrictions. So there was not a lot of traveling and those are still in place actually. So you know, the question was, is how do I reach uh, my, my units that are not here with me, co-located? So the intent of the show is to, to have conversations, to bring back the art of com- having conversations and difficult ones. Uh, during the civil unrest during this past year, you know, 2020, leading up to the election, there was a lot of uh, turmoil and, and a lot of things going on that just hit home for a lot of soldiers. So the best thing to do was to have a conversation, to get these opinions and these feelings. And what that led to was to a deeper understanding of, of each other, which would lead to common ground and of course would lead to uh, mission readiness. So thank you all for listening to The Influence. My name is uh, CW2 Bradley Garrett. COVID-19 had just started and the gyms were closed. No one knew how to react to it, but we wanted to make sure that soldiers had the options to keep their physical fitness uh, levels up. Because we know eventually it's gonna go away. ACFT was on pause, but we know that's just a delay and not a cancellation. So we want to make sure that soldiers knew these other types of ways to exercise that didn't involve a gym, maybe some pull-up bars, maybe some body weight. And it just took off from there. To let them know that we can still train for the ACFT using body weight and we try to incorporate all those calisthenic workouts into Pacific Guardian Fitness. So everybody in the brigade would acknowledge it before I would even see the video sometimes. They would walk up and say it was a great video or they used some of those things. They got them over some back pain, shoulder pain or whatever the case may be. Um, very interestingly, it's, it's, it hit some platforms I had no idea it was going to hit. It hit uh, military.com, some National Guard websites. I think I even saw it on the Air Force website. So, um, very proud of that. So our is going to demonstrate what we call the frog kick. This is going to still simulate or stimulate your top half and your bottom half of your body actually synchronizing, okay? started off getting a lot of questions in the hallways or people just dropping by my office during lunch asking uh, really random medical questions about what to do about different, you know, aches and pains, which is pretty typical uh, for uh, unit surgeons. Uh, But I would also get a lot of uh, COVID questions or really like rhetorical questions that actually weren't rhetorical when you actually ask a, a doctor about it because you know, certain cases, the science and the evidence is pretty clear. The last Q&A was specifically about the vaccination. Uh, I, I felt that a lot of the sort of information that's coming out from Big Army was uh, very impersonal. Um, and, you know, even Big Army, they, they did a bunch of studies and they figured, you know, they looked at different units to see, you know, who had better vaccine opt-in rates. And really it came down to which units had a command surgeon, you know, getting into the weeds and talking to, you know, everybody in the formation, you know, answering any questions saying, you know, why are you not taking the vaccine? What do you believe is not safe about this vaccine? I would get, you know, people would make, you know, offhand comments about the vaccine changing your DNA, which, you know, it's it's common knowledge that, I mean, I, I guess it's not common knowledge, but for sure the vaccine does not alter your DNA. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think everyone in the brigade needed to hear that from somebody they knew, but mm-hmm. was also in a position of authority, both, you know, in the unit and medically, to say, hey, that that's not true. You know, you know me. I'm your command surgeon. You know, my job is literally to look out for your health, uh, and I'm telling you that the vaccine is safe and it will not change your DNA. You know, contrary to what you might have seen elsewhere. This is Captain Chen, and thanks for joining me in another session of Ask the Doc. Thank you for joining us by valor and power.